Okay, so I had to make a fucking video because a lot of y'all are ignorant and you lack reading comprehension. So I can't type it because you're not going to fucking get it because you're slow. So let me explain. The original tweet, the dude said, why would I come home and clean up when I've been at work all day and you've been at home? Bitch, because we're fucking partners. Okay? If I am sitting around all day at home and I'm doing everything, all of the housework all the time, and you go to work and you have your days off, bitch, I want a day off too. The fuck? And I'm going to take one. And if you come home from work and the house is dirty and you don't like that, then guess this is what you can do. You can either help me clean the fuck up because we're partners or... You can be patient and wait till I clean it up when I fucking feel like it. And that's just how it's going to be. And if you disagree with that, then you can fucking pay me like the maid that you want to treat me like and the nanny that you want to treat me like. Or if you don't understand that, look up financial abuse, educate yourself and get the fuck up out my mansion. Shalom, like to give all undergoing praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rokakodash, like your double to our apostles and elders, great millstone. Salutations to our sincere Aki on pushing this word across the four corners of the world. And as you saw from this previous video, just the current mindset of these modern women, especially here in America, which is Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures. And you go into the word Babylon, it goes into confusion. And that's exactly the type of mindset, the vibration that this place, America, pushes out. Nothing but confusion because everything is contrary and adverse to the ways of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh via the scriptures. So with Babylon the Great or America being that main hub of their influence, it has transferred across the four corners of the world with that wicked type of vibration, which goes into that Babylonian wine. And a part of that main ingredient in that Babylonian cup is feminism, the advocacy of women's rights which have totally ruined the so-called women here in America and just really across the four corners of the world. And you go to the word woman, it goes into a female servant. Was she supposed to be a servant to her father until she gets married, then unto her husband? But the ways of Esau Edom, who are the so-called Caucasian race, begin with these elites. They have set it up so much that a woman feels like she could be over the man. Or she feels like she's equal to the man. She could be outspoken. And that's how the Heavenly Father Yahweh used that serpent to systematically design this wicked setup. And that's for us as the hopeful let to learn wickedness and learn righteousness. So we will have both spectrums to be the next judges and the next kingdom to come. So it all goes right back to Esau Edom, which is that serpent that was in that garden. And as you can see from the top right here, of Genesis, the third chapter, says the fall of man. And that's how we feel because the wages of sin is death. So this is Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord power had made. So, you know, you go to the word subtle, it goes into like cunning, devious, crafty, very tricky and manipulative. And those are nothing but characteristics of Esau Edom, so-called Caucasian race today beginning with these elites. And it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord power had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had the most I say, ye should not eat of every tree of the garden. So part of that tree is going to these different philosophies. And one of that is that feminism, which is a whole different type of tree that the Heavenly Father Yahweh set up. Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the most I have said, you should not eat of it. Neither should you touch it, lest ye die. Which leads up with the book of Ecclesiasticus, the 25th chapter, and the 24th verse. As you know, this story, she was beguiled by that serpent, which is a cunning man. So in Ecclesiasticus, the 25th chapter, the 24th verse, by her being beguiled by that serpent, it says, of the woman came to begin of sin, and through her we all die. So there's a warning for Eve not to eat from that tree, which goes into consuming the ways of that type of philosophy or doctrine. Verse four, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye should not surely die. So of course, a serpent being cunning, being very artful and devious with his words, and the woman being the weaker vessel, you can easily manipulate her. 
just like in today's time, you can see a lot of men can be able to manipulate a lot of women because it's just the way that the woman's DNA, her vibration is set up. She can be easily manipulated. They fall for anything. And that's exactly what Eve did by listening to this wayward doctrine of the serpent in the garden. Verse 5, for the Most High, do it know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes should be open, and you should be as gods, knowing good and evil. So that's a both spectrum of being a judge. Have to know both sides, the good and the evil, which makes a perfect balance for a perfect judge. So that's why we're experiencing all these things right now in this setup, witnessing all this wickedness that's going throughout the whole world. And Lord willing that we be imputed with the law, statutes, commandments, in our inward parts, as it says in the book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, how the Most High, he's going to give us a new heart and a new spirit that will be put within us. And how he's going to take away the stony heart out of our flesh. And he's going to give us a heart of flesh. And that's where we're going to be those perfect judges, Abarathazai, knowing good and evil. Verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to her eyes, so she had a great desire for it. So she saw herself being over the man in these top positions over the man, as far as in a financial state, having more rights governed toward her, for she had to say so. She could be outspoken. She could be independent. So that type of mindset of that type of tree that the serpent was offering her, it was so pleasant to her. She was being lustful right after it. It says, In a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took other fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. So when she found out that she was in the wrong of doing that, in verse 13, it says, And the Lord power said unto the woman, What is that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So that serpent only utilized this woman because he knew that she was the weaker vessel. And that's the exact type of spirit that Esau has today. How they separate the man out the household and just leave the woman alone with the children. Because they know when the head is gone, there's nothing but chaos and corruption going within that household. And who knows what that woman might raise. So she was beguiled. Just like when Kanye West said years ago, when he was on the stage, he said he sold his soul to the devil. He knew it was a crappy deal. Then he stated at least it came with a few tours like a happy meal. So a few tours to Eve was being independent, feminism, you know, the woman's lip, and the list goes on. So she fell for that serpent's tongue. And let's get that in 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and the third verse. But I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguile Eve through his subtlety, going right back to how crafty and artful and devious and sly Esau is. That's that spirit of Esau. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahweh Shai. So that's why you're seeing these modern day women nowadays are totally contrary to the true ways of Yahweh by Shem Shai. How a woman's supposed to be discreet, supposed to be subjected to her husband. Well, of course, with America being Babylon the Great, it pushes the totally opposite because Yahweh Bashem Yahushai has set up Esau Edom to be the total opposition to him. So that's why we have to learn evil to be able to appreciate righteousness, which is the next kingdom to come, when we will be those perfect judges, Lord willing. And this is the book of Psalm, the 58th chapter, and the third verse. The wicked are estranged from the womb. So we know who the wicked is according to the scriptures in Malachi, the first chapter, speaking about Esau Edom. He's the border of wickedness. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Like the apostles always state through the spirit, in order for you to know a lie, in order for you to lie, you have to know the truth. So of course that serpent was using much subtlety in that garden. So you know he knew what was right and what was wrong. But he utilized Eve being that weaker vessel. And he took advantage of that. Just like how he's doing with Eve in today's time in the way of the advocacy of women's right, a.k.a. feminism. That feminist movement, which had totally poisoned the daughters of Zion. 
Verse 4, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. So if you get bit by a poisonous serpent, it doesn't do any good for your body. You slowly die from that poison if you don't get it taken care of. So that's the way of Esau's philosophies, his dogma, his doctrines, his smooth speeches, his democracy, his poison. That's why the majority of these Americans are totally filthy from this American way of life. Which has transferred to all these other nations. They're taking pursuit of that Babylonian wine. Which have poisoned them as well. It's stated in the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter about America. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So it says their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stop in her ear. So a part of Esau's poison is the democracy, feminism, his religions. Pretty much anything that's written outside the scriptures of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. If the Most High tells you to do something, Esau tells you, don't do it. If the Most High tells you, don't do something, Esau tells you to do it. So he's the totally opposition to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which represents righteousness. So let's get that in the book of Romans, the sixth chapter, in the 23rd verse. For the wages of sin is death. So by Yahweh by Shem El Shai giving us the laws, statutes, commandments as a people, the Israelites, that's what make us above and separate from all these other nations. And by us keeping those laws, statutes, and commandments as a people, then we'll be totally good. Meaning that we will be spiritually and physically blessed. So if they breach a contract by the wages of sin, look at our people in today's time. Look at the predicament of that breach of contract. Look at the mindset of these modern day women of our nation. Well, that's the wages of sin. And who was it utilized by? That serpent, which represents Esau Edom. Because us as the biblical Israelites, we are like the superheroes amongst these other nations. So with Esau Edom, that serpent, utilizing his subtility, which is a part of his craftiness, his wicked schemes and plans, us as the biblical Israelites sinning, is our kryptonite. But Esau straight mastered that. And that's why you see the degenerates of our people in today's time. That's why you see these women talk like this to a man. None regarding about, okay, this is wrong according to the Heavenly Father of how a woman's supposed to treat a man, especially her husband. So for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai is eternal life through Yahweh Shai, our Lord. So it's by being reborn again as the hopeful elect. So we can enter into that everlasting rest. And this is 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the third verse. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And a part of our gospel, which represents the good news, first and foremost, is the kingdom of heaven is for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. And telling our people, for the ones that have an ear to hear and eyes to see, to get right with Yahweh by Shem El Shai. Make no terror to turn to Yahweh by Shem El Shai, especially in these last days. And for the women of our nation that's truly seeking Yahweh by Shem El Shai, stay in order as it says in the scriptures. So that's a part of our good news because a part of us pushing out that righteous vibration is going to lead us into an everlasting kingdom of righteousness. And we will never have to go through this wickedness again, this bad nightmare. So it's here to two-thirds of our people because two-thirds of our people, they are drinking off that Babylonian wine. And part of that Babylonian wine, again, represents feminism. And it says it's here to them that are lost. And that woman at the beginning of this video, she's definitely one of those people of our nation that are totally lost in the sauce. And you're going to see another video, Lord willing, after this video, that's showing more proof of the mindset of these modern-day women, especially the ones of our nation are totally lost, finished out here. It says, A whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. Going right back to Esau Edom. He's the God of this world. And two thirds of our people subscribe to the fashion of this world. And what does that equal to? The wages of sin, which is death. And it says, Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Yahweh Shai, who is the image of Yahweh, shall shine unto them. So, us as the hopeful elect, which is a threat to. Esau's new world order because we're coming to a new mindset as Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai ordering our steps in righteousness through the spirit 
because we see the side effects of black culture, nigga culture, feminism, chasing after this so-called American dream. Because in order for you to dream, you have to be asleep, as George Carlin said. So we see through the spirit with our spiritual eyesight, meaning the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, that that's not the way to go. That's not going to lead us into everlasting righteousness, a righteous sovereignty, where it's going to be ruled by manly men, which is totally against this whole system. Because of the type of vibration that we're pushing out, they deem that as toxic masculinity. So things are totally upside down here. So that's why we're looking forward to a new heavens and a new earth where in do under righteousness. That leads me to the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. And as you can see right here at the top, the new heaven and earth, which represents the kingdom of heaven. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Which leads me right to Isaiah 60 and 21. Now people also should be all righteous. Going right back to Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, how the Most High, Lord willing, has to hopefully let program us with that new spirit, having that new heart. But we were going to be spiritually programmed the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We would never go off. We would never be victim to the kryptonite Esau set up on us, which is our sins. So it says that people also should be all righteous. They should inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. And that's exactly what we're doing through the Spirit. It's a hopeful let, glorifying, honoring, and proclaiming the names of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh in these last days. Especially to our people, whether they hear or forbear. And we're telling our people if they're still going to be in that mindset of America, along with this American dream, this American way of life, then they're going to fall right behind. They're going to be just like Lot's wife. They look back. So it was just a video right there through the Spirit, just how... The current mindset of these modern women are totally contrary to the ways of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And it's sickening every day just to hear these women talk like that. But we know, according to the book of Genesis, the third chapter, we have to experience this side, which goes into evil, in order for us to appreciate righteousness, which goes into the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be an everlasting rulership. So I'm about to decide, you always edify with that. You always stay strong. Shalom. Uh, like if you nine to five at Burger King or some hell no. But if you nine to five at yeah, my JP person. Morgan or some hell yeah. Cause nah, I know that G. Friday check about to have multiple nah, zeros. Fuck that little bank shit. Shit, that's a fraud nigga. I might as well get a fraud nigga. Fuck. I don't know. You work in the bank too, shit, technically. Like, I don't no. know. So hold on, so if a nigga work at the bank. No, I don't want you. I'm so kidding. let's say this nigga work at the bank making 500000 a year. You don't want that nigga? You can give me a banker. Fuck? Give me a banker, the, a doctor, are you drunk? a lawyer. Now, if you doing that shit a specialist, to cover up some not other a pediatrician, shit. a specialist. If you doing that shit surgeon. to cover up some shit, like let's say the nigga that work in the bank <laughs> sell fucking drugs. Like I'm with it. What the fuck? Girl, is you on the you on the movie. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> hey, sit down. <laughs>